In China's Guangxi province, a farmer languishes sick with AIDS. His wife and son, too, are very sick. At an orphanage outside Phnom Penh, children living with HIV take their ARVs. In a Bangkok laboratory, researchers prepare samples and sift through data. These are all scenes from the AIDS epidemic in Asia. Here since 2001, AMFAR has been at the forefront of the response through its Treat Asia network. There are scientific problems, scientific challenges that Asia faces in response to the AIDS epidemic, which can't be answered merely on a local level. They can't even be answered on a national level. They require a regional response in order to understand how to approach the epidemic. With 57 sites in 12 countries throughout the region, Treat Asia allows researchers to compare data, learn about drug treatment and resistance, and understand how social factors affect the epidemic and develop strategies to combat the disease and improve patients' lives. So what is important for the network is to try to uh, look for commonalities in addressing this epidemic within the diverse cultural or social or even the medical systems which exist uh, within the Asian countries. You, know, you need research to inform policies, you need research to inform programs, you need good research um, for good practice, basically. There's not a single AIDS epidemic happening in Asia. There are many AIDS epidemics happening in Asia. What ties these epidemics together are that they affect these vulnerable, very often marginalized populations. They affect the poor disproportionately and, and populations which live on very often the edges of society. That's a characteristic of the epidemic in Asia that I think is drawn in very stark relief. To fight the epidemic on all fronts, Treat Asia connects research with communities at risk, sex workers, injecting drug users, migrant workers, and men who have sex with men. In Bangkok, Thailand, where 30% of men who have sex with men are HIV positive, doctors at the Thai Red Cross have integrated an HIV program into cancer screenings. We receive a lot of MSM coming to the clinic because they want to be in a good health. When they come for anal pap smear, they will always talk to them about HIV, talk to them about HIV testing, and I'm very glad that almost 100% of those people who come for anal pap smear will agree for HIV testing. In China, counselors living with HIV reach out to others who have been diagnosed or fallen sick with AIDS. Simple picture books developed by Treat Asia help patients understand treatment and how to improve their own health. Treat Asia has also developed programs to address the special needs of women in the region who are at risk of infection or living with HIV. ពីចំណេះដឹងលើការព្យាបាលហ្នឹងពួកគាត់ហ្នឹង <coughs> In Phnom Penh, Cambodia, HIV-positive women have developed a business enterprise, a clothing factory, and built a community of support 
With help from Treat Asia, they can learn about their disease and care for themselves, and more importantly, one another. These women um, right now have a sense of, of, uh, of, of empowerment that is unique. And there is a sense of dignity and self-respect and pride, which is often um, absent with women in this part of the world who are HIV positive. Where women are affected in great numbers, so are children. Treat Asia is responding with an extensive pediatrics program. I think the ultimate goal of the pediatric program is to be able to improve patient outcomes, improve the lives of children living with HIV. Whether we do that through the evidence that we gather through our research or through the direct community support that we provide either to the children themselves or their caretakers, their mothers, their fathers, their grandparents, all of that is going to contribute to improving the quality of life of these kids. Today, new realities in Asia demand new kinds of research and new levels of response. Important for Treat Asia is to evolve as uh, the epidemic evolves because the questions are going to change. The populations, the ways we practice medicine in general is going to change. There's been a torrent of social change in Asia over the last 25, 30 years. In order to respond to the AIDS epidemic, there needs to be continuing social change, social change that incorporates a commitment to human rights and social justice. I'm afraid that uh, even the HIV epidemic has been curbed down in the past. The second wave of the big epidemic may come up soon if you know, uh, we, we, we don't pay much attention on it. You have to keep you know, putting it on the agenda. You have to keep making noise. Treat Asia, a real-world solution to AIDS in Asia.